Something very strange is happening in these places. This huge development in these places could set the world up for the mark of the beast. Number 1. Davo, Switzerland With strange titles like The Great Reset, the World Economic Forum has long been suspected of being the organization that will introduce the mark of the beast. Watch this video to the end to learn this organization's strangest plan and how Christians should respond to it. The World Economic Forum WEF, is a non-government organization based in Colony near Geneva, Switzerland. It was started on January 24, 1971 by a German engineer named Klaus Schwab. This organization gets most of its money from 1,000 big companies that make over 5 billion US dollars annually. They also get some money from the government. Their main goal is to improve the world by bringing together leaders from business, politics, and other areas to help shape important plans for the world, different regions, and industries. The forum believes that the best way to handle a globalized world is through a group of chosen multinational companies and governments. They show this through ideas like the Great Reset and the Global Redesign. The WEF is best known for its big annual meeting held at the end of January in Davos, a mountain resort in Switzerland. This meeting gathers about 3,000 paying members and special guests, including investors, business leaders, politicians, economists, celebrities, and journalists. They spend up to five days discussing global issues in around 500 sessions. How should a Christian view the Great Reset by the World Economic Forum? In June 2020, the World Economic Forum WEF, hosted its 50th annual conference in Davos, Switzerland. At the Davos 2020 conference, the term The Great Reset was introduced, and the Great Reset Initiative was launched. The concept of The Great Reset has been around since at least 2010, when the book The Great Reset by Richard Florida was published. The World Economic Forum's plan for The Great Reset wants to change how countries relate to each other, how economies work, what societies focus on, how businesses operate, and how the world's resources are managed, as mentioned on their website. At the 2020 conference, there were 3,000 people from 117 countries, including 53 leaders of nations. The supporters of the Great Reset want to create a new global system with a lot of control over different areas of life. This has led some people to question if the Great Reset is linked to the Antichrist rule in the end times. Revelation chapter 17 verses 12 through 13 tells us that ten kings will team up with the beast during the tribulation, sharing power. They will then fight against the Lamb, verse 14. Since the Antichrist's future rule is known to be evil, any move to gather economic or political power might align with Satan's plans, no matter how helpful these plans seem. If the objectives of the Great Reset are achieved, it could lead to the establishment of a global governing body, a concept that Daniel views as a frightening entity. Revelation chapter 17 verses 12 through 15. The ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have received no kingdom as yet, but they receive authority for one hour as kings with the beast. These are of one mind, and they will give their power and authority to the beast. These will make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings and those who are with them are called, chosen, and faithful. Then he said to me, The waters which you saw where the harlot sits are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. This is likely referring to a ten-nation confederation. Regardless of their specific identity, their actions are obvious. This mysterious figure rules over all the people, crowds, nations, and languages in the world. 
The prophecies and warnings found in the Bible are not just historical or theoretical concerns. They are highly relevant to the spiritual challenges we face today. When faced with the challenges of the Great Reset and otherworldly plans that resemble the rebuilding of the Tower of Babel, how should a Christian respond? First, refuse to worry. Remember that all the schemes of the godless will come to nothing. We learn from Proverbs chapter 12 that God condemns those who devise wicked schemes. The real Great Reset will happen when Jesus Christ returns, bringing true justice, peace, and fairness to a world that desperately needs it. Number two, the EU and ships. Pay attention, America. The sign of the Antichrist is already underway. A recent World Economic Forum update discussed a topic called the race for advanced AI chips. In this post, they shared a link that said, Right now, demand for the advanced chips needed to power AI is skyrocketing. In response, many leading technology companies are unveiling new models of AI chips. Intel Meta all announced their latest AI chips. NVIDIA unveiled its new AI chip at its annual developer conference in March, promising super-fast processing speeds. The semiconductor company is a leading manufacturer of the graphics processing unit, GPU chips needed for large language models. This year, it has become the third largest public company in the world by market capitalization. Chips are the building block of a new type of economy. The economy will indeed change. No matter what industry you are in, consumer goods, healthcare, shipping, the business processes are becoming AI-enabled, says an expert in AI in the enterprise. The Post then went on to say, Many countries, including the US, the EU nations and India, are heavily investing in new semiconductor facilities to build the wafers that form the base for advanced chips. However, it will take many years for these facilities to become operational. This has fueled the belief that the prophecy of the Bible in the book of Revelation is underway, particularly the concept of the mark of the beast. Number three, Australia and the RFID chip. What's happening in Australia? Australia is quickly using RFID technology everywhere. Plus, Australia is trying out RFID for tagging fish tomatoes, and other foods. Let's compare Australia with another country that has a similar number of people and similar money habits, the Netherlands. The Netherlands is known for using RFID technology a lot, especially in places like sports events, such as football games. They use RFID cards and other RFID tools for many things. Radio frequency identification, RFID uses special waves to automatically find and track small chips attached to things. This technology has been around for a long time and is used for many purposes, like tracking medicine, library books, cars, jewelry, pets, and even wildlife. RFID helps easily locate and quickly identify these items. It's also used in car keys that don't need to be turned and for paying with a card without touching it. Now, RFID chips are being put into people. Some companies have given their workers these chips so they can just wave their hand to open doors, pay for food, and use the copy machine. People who support these RFID chips for humans imagine a future where no one needs to carry a wallet or passport, where lost children and seniors can be found easily. Kidnapped people can be rescued quickly, and doctors can see a patient's medical history instantly. RFID technology is becoming more popular worldwide, but there are worries about health, technology, and ethics. For those who read the Bible, an RFID chip might seem like the mark of the beast mentioned in Revelation, especially since many of these chips are put in a person's right hand. 
The Mark of the Beast in the Bible The book of Revelation tells us about the mark of the beast. When the Antichrist, also called the beast, is in charge, everyone, whether rich or poor, free or enslaved, will have to get a mark on their right hand or forehead. This mark is needed to buy or sell anything. It will show the beast's name or a number connected to him. By making this mark mandatory, the beast can control buying and selling. If the mark is an RFID chip, it can also track everyone and see their personal information. Number 4. Sweden Also, we have reports of Johan Osterlund from Sweden, who implanted a microchip under people's hands. This is a scenario that is happening more and more in today's age. The company is called Biohacks International, and over the past few years, he is reported to have done this procedure over 4,000 times. Many people are worried about such chips and technologies due to the power of controlling buying and selling using similar technology. Osterlin thinks that his company's success is connected to Sweden's openness to new technology, which might worry people in other countries more. Because of our history, we trust the government more here, he said. People in other countries might be more worried than we are in Sweden. Just like in our previous examples, this situation reminds people of the book of Revelation, especially in chapter 13, verses 16 to 17. It talks about a mark on people's hands or foreheads that could be linked to new technology and events that might happen during the Great Tribulation at the end of time. This has caused many to think, could this really be the technology that the Book of Revelation prophesied about? It is actually amazing to think that the Book of Revelation is so relevant, although it was written 2,000 years ago. The Mark of the Beast will identify those who worship and submit to the rule of the beast. Those who refuse the mark Will be considered traitors and may face starvation or immediate death if captured. One scholar describes this period as a time when both capital and labor are under the control of one man. Those outside of this system will be boycotted, unable to find work, buy or sell goods, leading to bankruptcy and starvation. According to the Bible passages in Revelation chapter 16, verse 2 and chapter 19, verse 20, the mark of the beast is a symbol that distinguishes those who worship the beast out of the sea. Revelation shows us the economic strategy of the first beast and the second beast. Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 through 17. Also he compels all, the small and the great and the rich and the poor, and the free men and the slaves, to be given a mark on their right hand or on their forehead, signifying allegiance to the beast, and that no one will be able to buy or sell, except the one who has the mark, either the name of the beast or the number of his name. He causes all to receive a mark. A mark will be given to everyone under the government of the beast and his associate. This mark is necessary to participate in the economy, and those without it will not be able to buy or sell anything. Only those bearing a special number on a visible part of their body, hand or forehead, will be allowed to trade, and the number will only be marked on those who engage in imperial idolatry. The number 666 is the coded name of the dictator. We have already discussed its meaning the nature of apocalyptic writing. Until he arrives, when his identity with this figure will be only too obvious, all attempts to decode it are useless speculation. One thing is clear, he will fall short of perfection, seven, in every regard. The word haragma in the ancient Greek refers to a mark, but it is not commonly associated with people thus some interpret it as a symbolic mark. However, the idea of a physical mark required for buying or selling is not impossible 
and could be practical. Revelation chapter 7, verses 3 through 4. Saying, Do not harm the earth, nor the sea, nor the trees until we seal. Mark the bondservants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard how many were sealed, a hundred and forty-four thousand, twelve thousand sealed from every tribe of the sons of Israel. The Antichrist is described as a man whose appearance was greater than his brothers. Due to his charismatic personality, speaking abilities, and outstanding good looks, he will be extremely irresistible to the masses. The Apostle John adds to Daniel's account of the Antichrist's blasphemous activities by stating that everyone alive must worship him. Finally, the Antichrist is referred to as a beast in Revelation chapter 13 verses 1 through 8, which is an apt description. Throughout the final three and a half years of the tribulation, the Antichrist will personify Satan himself. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 9 says, The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders. The Antichrist will progress from being a regional leader to a world leader, a ruthless global tyrant, and finally, a god. The Number of the Beast Revelation chapter 13 verse 18 here is wisdom. Let the person who has enough insight calculate the number of the beast, for it is the imperfect number of a man, and his number is 666. The usage of numbers as symbols is very common. The book of Revelation has a large number of sevens, including stars, lampstands, lamps, seals, trumpets, and bowls. It is the round number of the Bible, the complete, the perfect figure. Twelve is associated with the old people of God, their tribes, and the new, their apostles. Twenty-four brings them together. One thousand is the largest number. Six-six-six is the one that captures attention. It is made up of sixes a figure that always alludes to humans' inability to achieve the seven that represents complete perfection. It is used here as a clue to the identity of the last world dictator before Jesus reigns for a thousand years, in Latin, a millennium. Is it significant that 666 is the total of all the Roman numerals except one? The word mark in the Bible doesn't have any special meaning except for its link to the beast. In Greek, the word haragma usually meant a stamp or a seal used on documents or coins. Haragma was often used as an official seal of the Roman Empire on important papers during the 1st and 2nd centuries. In addition to its use in Revelation, the term haragma appears only once in the New Testament. Specifically, in Acts chapter 17, verse 29, where it refers to an artistic image. Acts chapter 17, verse 29. So then, being God's children, we should not think that the divine nature, deity, is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination or skill of man. Who is the Antichrist? And how will we know him? The Bible tells us that during the tribulation, one man, the Antichrist, will rise up to bring the world together under one rule. Just like his father, the devil, this evil leader will seem like a good guy at first, but he will eventually show his true wicked self. How will he bring the nations together? The prophet Daniel describes the Antichrist in these terms. Daniel chapter 7, verses 7 through 8. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and brake in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. 
I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of man, and a mouth speaking great things. Daniel tells us that the next big leader will be famous for their impressive speeches, which will make people pay attention and give them control. But Daniel also warns us that the smooth talker will not only speak grandly, but will also speak with pride against God. The Apostle John talks about this leader in the book of Revelation. The beast was given a mouth to speak proud and disrespectful words, and power to whack for forty-two months. Revelation chapter 13 verse 5 And the beast was given a mouth, the power of speech, uttering great things and arrogant and blasphemous words. And he was given freedom and authority to act and to do as he pleased for forty-two months, three and a half years. Who will worship the Antichrist? According to Revelation chapter 13 verse 8, all who dwell on the earth will worship him. According to Daniel chapter 7 verse 25, the Antichrist is a cult leader. He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, and shall intend to change times and law. He will speak out against heaven's genuine God. The terminology suggests that he will attempt to elevate himself to the level of God, and make statements from there. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 4 says, The Antichrist opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. He will accept the worship of the people of the world. Does the mark of the beast exist today? Many of us wonder if the mark of the beast in Revelation chapter 13 will be a high-tech tattoo or the plan of a billionaire. The Bible makes it very clear what the mark is and when it will happen. To begin, there is a strict timing requirement for the mark. Scripture teaches that the mark of the beast will appear at a particular time and place in history, but at this point in time, we have not yet arrived at that time or place. The reason why the mark of the beast is referred to as the mark of the beast is because it is brought into being by a man who is referred to as the beast. So, until the Antichrist is ruling the entire earth, there can be no mark. And since the Bible says the beast and his mark do not appear on earth until the midpoint of the seven-year tribulation, then the mark cannot exist in any form prior to the tribulation. Therefore. Any suggestion that a mark of the beast exists today in any form is merely a forewarning. Number 5. The West and the Cashless Society Welcome to the cashless economy. The stage is set for the new world leader. What is the connection between the increasing move towards an electronic cashless society and biblical prophecy about the end times? According to the scriptures, it is predicted that the Antichrist will establish a global government and economy. In this scenario, everyone will be mandated to receive a mark in order to engage in commerce, buying or selling any type of goods. In Revelation chapter 13, the second beast compels everyone to receive a mark on their right hands or foreheads. It stated that they could not buy or sell unless they had the mark which is the name of the beast or the number of its name. Revelation chapter 13 verse 17 Some suggest that for the Antichrist or the beast to control all buying and selling, a cashless society will be necessary during the tribulation. With cash, transactions can be completed privately, but if all currency becomes electronic, every transaction can be monitored. Are we moving towards a cashless society? And if so, does it mean we are getting closer to the end times? With so much talk about cryptocurrency, many Christians wonder if this is a sign that we are getting deeper into the book of Revelation 
and that Christ's return is near. Some people think that for the Antichrist or the beast to control all buying and selling, we need to have a cashless society first. They believe that as long as we still use cash, we are not in the end of days yet. But if we switch to a cashless system where all transactions are digital, then every transaction could be controlled and watched, just as Revelation chapter 13 verse 17 suggests. Whether we use cash, cryptocurrency, or no cash at all, we are already living in the end times. Jesus' resurrection and ascension began the end of days more than 2,000 years ago. Many people look at Revelation to understand when the end is near, especially when the Antichrist or the beast will control all buying and selling during the tribulation. But a cashless society is not needed to make Revelation chapter 13 verse 17 come true. What is a cashless society? A world where we don't use cash might sound like something from a science fiction movie, but it's actually starting to happen. Some governments and money companies are making this new way of handling money a reality. Even though cryptocurrencies are becoming more popular, we still haven't yet fully stopped using cash yet. The Bible talks about a cashless society in two places, though it doesn't use the exact phrase cashless society. In Revelation chapter 13 verses 16 through 18, it describes a situation where everyone must have a mark on their right hand or forehead to buy or sell things. This mark is often linked to the number 666. Could a cashless society mean the end times? Right now, cash is becoming less common, but the situation described in Revelation chapter 13 verse 17 could happen even in a world that uses cash. Long ago, if a tradesman wanted to sell his goods, he had to belong to a trade group. Each group had its own god, and to trade, the craftsmen had to worship that god. If a Christian refused to worship, they couldn't buy or sell anything. In some places today, Christians are not allowed to buy or sell at all. Some rules clearly stop transactions with followers of Christ. Despite the fears of many people about a cashless society and its potential for government control and tracking, leading to concerns about the Antichrist and the mark of the beast, it's important to note that bartering will always be an option in a cashless society. If the Antichrist were to arrive, he could potentially declare cash as worthless and introduce a new form of currency requiring people to take the mark of the beast to participate in buying and selling goods. A cashless society doesn't mean that the Antichrist is here, and it doesn't go against Christian beliefs. If we end up living in a cashless world, Christians should keep their faith in God, believing that He will provide for all their needs. Remember, God is the one who gives us everything we need and the rapture could happen any time. The good news is that it's never too late to choose eternal life. You can still study the Bible, get to know God better, and trust that He will provide for you. All you need is faith in God's free gift of grace through Jesus Christ. When you make this choice, you'll be exchanging the temporary things of this world for everlasting life. Studies show that 46% of Americans aren't worried about carrying cash. By October 2018, 29% of Americans never used cash for purchases, and 52% used it only sometimes. This adds up to 86% of Americans mainly using other ways to pay when they shop. Credit and debit cards are just one option among many electronic payment methods available today. With Apple Pay, Google Pay, and Samsung Pay, people can pay by scanning a code from their smartphone. Social cash sharing apps like Venmo, Cash App, and Google Wallet let people pay friends and split bills quickly by sending money electronically with just a click. 
Many times when I hear people talking about how the global elites are creating a new world order and running the world, I am reminded of a passage from Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2. It says that in the past, people followed the ways of the world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. The key words are the prince of the power of the air which refers to Satan as a powerful figure in the world, but not all-powerful. It's important to remember that. Imagine a world where unseen forces shape our reality and hold the reins. What if I told you that this is not just a figment of imagination, but a profound truth? What if I told you that some entities are responsible for different parts of this world, just as our countries have physical leaders, the Bible reveals the existence of spiritual rulers who govern specific territories. Who are these enigmatic entities? What drives them? And when will their reign end? There are battles fought and things that happen in the spiritual realm that we may know nothing about. But we are taught that our conduct has an effect on what transpires there. The term God of this world, or God of this age, shows that Satan has a significant impact on what most people think and believe. This includes their ideals, opinions, goals, hopes, and views. His influence reaches into the world's ideas about philosophy, education, and business. Many of the thoughts, ideas, and false beliefs in the world come from his lies and tricks. Satan is also known as the prince of the power of the air in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2. In John chapter 12 verse 31, he's called the ruler of this world. These names tell us about Satan's power. For instance, being called the prince of the power of the air means he has some control over the world and the people living in it. This does not mean that he controls the world completely. God is still in charge. However, it does mean that God in his unlimited wisdom has allowed Satan to work in this world within the limits God has established for him. When the Bible states that Satan has power over the world, we must understand that God has assigned him authority over those who do not believe. Christ referred to Satan as the prince of this world on three separate occasions. The teachings of the Bible make it abundantly clear that either the people who inhabit the earth are under the sway of the world and its cunning and deception, or else they are believers in Christ and are led by the Holy Spirit of God. There is no neutral ground. The Bible draws the lines. According to what is taught in the Bible, worldliness is a force, a spirit that is in opposition and in contradiction to all that is godly and Christian. The pursuit of one's pleasure Material success and a sense of superiority over one's own life is its aim. It is focused on one's interests. The existence of God is not necessarily rejected. Rather, he is neglected and overlooked. Satan is also called the God of this world. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4 Among them the God of this world, Satan, has blinded the minds of the unbelieving to prevent them from seeing the illuminating light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. When we talk about the God of this world or God of this age, we mean that Satan has a big say in how most people think, what they believe, and what they want in life. This world in this sense is the culture that goes against Jesus, Satan is the big boss of this world's culture. He affects not just what we think about, but also our schools, businesses, and everyday activities. Satan uses lies and tricks to control what people think and believe. He makes plans, and people follow them without realizing they're being misled. That's why the Bible calls Satan a liar. The Bible warns us about the arrival of challenging times, and it's evident that they are upon us. It's as if the stage is set, 
the countdown has begun, and it's time to be prepared. It's important for us to pray for the world and intercede for this generation. We also need to prioritize sharing the message of Jesus Christ with others. Focusing solely on worldly matters is like rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. We should instead prioritize helping others understand and accept Jesus Christ. As parents and grandparents, it's important to impart strong values and truths to our children to prepare them for the difficulties they will face in the last days. When the events prophesied in the Bible come to pass, we should find comfort in anticipating the return of Jesus Christ rather than despairing. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10, Paul urges the church in Thessalonica to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead. It stresses the importance of eagerly and patiently awaiting the return of Jesus. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 20, Paul also encourages the church in Philippi to eagerly anticipate the Savior from heaven, despite Jesus having already come for redemption. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 7, Paul told the church in Corinth, so that you come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Both in Philippi and Corinth, people were waiting for Jesus. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28, it says, So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto those who look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. You should be learning about Jesus' return, living with that in mind, longing for it and watching for it. You need to expect Jesus to come back at any time. Paul also told Titus in Titus chapter 2, verse 13, about the grace of God that saves us and makes us different. And he said, Looking for the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We should focus on seeking Jesus. We shouldn't be worried about things like the rebuilding of the temple, the rise of the Antichrist, the gathering of Israel, or natural disasters. Instead, we should be looking forward to Jesus' return. His coming is near, and we should be ready for it. When Jesus comes again, it will happen suddenly, in a flash, in the blink of an eye. The Antichrist is coming, and we need to be aware. These are the last days, so we need to stay alert. The Antichrist is on the way, and we need to be aware. Remember 1 John chapter 2, verse 18, which says, Little children, it is the last time, so we need to wake up. And as you have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. There is a world leader waiting to step into the spotlight, and his name is Antichrist. Jesus showed us what God looks like, because He is God in human form. On the other hand, the Antichrist will show us what the devil is like, because he will follow the devil. Just like Jesus represents God the Father, the Antichrist will represent Satan. Satan wants people to worship him and follow him, and he will try to do this through the Antichrist. So it's correct to say the Antichrist is evil, also, the Antichrist causes division. We've seen people who go to church but haven't really accepted Jesus as their Savior. They might join in church activities, like walking down the aisle, getting baptized, or singing in the choir. But later, they might get interested in strange or unusual groups. Why does this happen? It's because, even though they are with us, they are not truly part of us. They don't have a real connection with other believers, and they don't have the Holy Spirit in them, so they eventually drift away. Some say they lost their salvation, but the truth is, they never really had it. Friend, 
the Antichrist doesn't want you to understand who Jesus really is. Throughout history, the main issue has always been about Jesus and his work. If you get Jesus wrong, nothing else matters. Listen carefully to what 1 John chapter 2 verse 22 says. Who is a liar but he that denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is an antichrist that denies the Father and the Son. If you're wrong about Jesus, you don't understand God the Father either. The government of the beast will persecute and extinguish all those who do not bow in worship to the beast.